Okay, they're good. Yeah. I'm gonna share my screen. Okay. So you are gonna work separately, as I understood. On yeah. Capstone, yeah. shall I uh, explain everything for our front end or? I think pretty much you should focus on front end. The Capstone, it's more like there are all the reusable stuff we will definitely need. So it's good. You just focus on purely expanding front end and then Okay, so um, add one component maybe in the tab mm -hmm. and just as an example and, yeah, and run it. Yeah, we are using a Yarn as package manager. So I'm starting all over then. I'm cloning the front end first. You can clone it. you clone it you need to go front end src folder and then start yarn install so it's gonna install all libraries we're using so that's why when you add any library, you need to uh, do yarn install again. Yeah, it's done. Then you can call yarn dev to start it. But on the other hand, you need to add your own config, config.js file. So since I haven't added yet, it's gonna give an error. So I cloned it on desktop, react. You see there is front end inside SRC folder, you need to have your own config folder, which includes config.js file. So I'm just copy paste it from our current config file. Inside SRC. Yeah, now it should work.
did you get an install again? Yeah, I did. Well, the thing is about the config file, but maybe. Did you create it? Because Let we deleted it. Run again. Yeah, we have config here. So as we see, after adding config file, you need to do yarn dev again. Or before doing yarn dev, you need to add config file. So we reached our current code. So the structure that I'm using, we have everything is kind of inside SRC folder. We have assets folder. It includes static files like icons, images. We have components. These components are our pages. And every component include its own subcomponents if it have. So the app is our main component. Every other page is working under app component. So when we gonna uh, when we add another page, we need to import it in app file. And then I'm I'm adding every page in this pages list. So if the page is not in this list and users uh, heart request that page, we can uh, redirect them uh, for all four page. So, yeah. So app, hmm? sorry, uh, app, app dot JSX is something that every other component inherits that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, every component is running under app component. Okay. Every other component, apps, child components. Okay. So, for example, for header and footer, we just add it on apps render. So, let's just add a new page and uh, go through area possible issue. Yeah. So let's add a, a like job posting page. So we have two different user types. User can be logged in or user can be not logged in. We have different pages for user who logged in and we have different pages for not logged in users. So I'm checking it on under apps render method. If user logged in, I'm uh, returning another router than if user is not logged in. So if we are adding a page for logged in users, we need to add the component under the condition if is user logged in. 
So that's for the uh, job postings, probably it's gonna be for logged in users. And so we have this company's page now. It's probably gonna be very similar in structure wise with this page. So let's just duplicate it and change. Are there any roles for user? Rules? Roles, because... Role, roots? A role, role, role. Like, so like what kind of roles? So I mean, when you say a user, that could be uh, an employee. Yeah, it, it's another thing. Okay. They are, uh, I'm not sure if they are using this correct uh, terms. Okay. In professional life, but we are using uh, user types for them and they can only be this employee, like career service student alumni users, are user types and these user types are different uh, okay. separation from okay. is user logged in or not logged in okay. separation. So if is user logged in, we can learn the user type. So job posting, yeah. So job posting gonna have its own sub components like job cards and maybe some detailed job card after clicking something. So the main component gonna be job postings page, which gonna list each job posting. So I'm just renaming it. So you know, I, I don't know if you know, anyone uh, have any question about React, just ask right now or anytime. We need to, of course, import React and we are generally using class components because we are using states. So the name of the class gonna be chat posting. And of course, we're going to export it as job posting. We need to add it at this component inside app. So I'm using VS code. It can do automatic imports. Like as job posting, yeah. Otherwise, you need to add here. You see, it should be somewhere there. Yeah. Okay. It's automatically added here. Yeah, otherwise, you need to do it manually with the correct path. And we want we need to uh, define a path for it. So that it be job posting or just jobs. So job posting is a component. It's gonna take some props. Let's see which uh, props it needs. What's prop again? Prop, a React component can, uh, so the parent, component can pass 
some of its like variables functions into a child component. For do that, there are two different things. One is properties, it calls props, and the other thing is states. So you can pause, uh, yeah, you can pass parent states or functions or anything to child as defining a prop for child. So job posting will be apps child component. So this alert is gonna be job postings, one of the props and the token expression gonna be one of the props. This is like, yeah, the handle token expression is a function is defined inside app. We can pass this function to child to use it. Otherwise we cannot use it directly. Cookie is another function that I defined here. Yeah, alert is another function. You can also pass some states as props. So for job posting, since we just duplicated the company's page, it's gonna require the same props as company's page. So it's, yeah, it's just another handle token expression and cookie. And what state is there? State? Yeah. So state, every React in class components actually, mm -hmm. React, uh, yeah, React has class components and functional components. Class components has the states. The thing is, you are defining state inside the constructor function of that class component. And you can change states based on users uh, activity interaction. You can say if any, if a predefined event happened, like user click that button, you can uh, go and change X state as true or false or something else, whatever you want. I see. So after uh, each stage change triggers that component to be re-rendered. Okay. Yeah. So state changes triggers the owner of that state components render method. And just that render method, if it, that uh, render method includes another components, they're also kind of uh, triggered. So that's, uh, yeah, in that way, each state change just updates its own component in the main HTML. It's not re-rendering everything. It's just rendering what's gonna need to change. Okay. Yeah, we defined the path also. So, and I put it under is user logged in part. So, if I try to go jobs now. Should open the company's page again. Yeah, it says page not found because we didn't add the jobs pad inside our pages. Yeah, we added the new page and we can reach it by just changing the URL at the moment. We also need to add it, generally we also need to add it to our header. 
So our header component is under partials folder. Under partials, there are some like partial component. You want to reuse them inside header. Yeah, so there is two different header types inside header. We can uh, show if user logged in a different header, if user not logged in a different header. So there is two different headers generate. These are the functions that I'm generating. Headers generate non-logged in headers. Yeah, we can find different headers function names for them. We need to put it under if user logged in, so generate logged in header part. So our header part is here. We have some icons that are on, on hovering they're opening a drop down. So probably for the job posting, it's, it need to be under that uh, business case icon, as long as they for metrics and companies. So it's here, just we need to add another menu item as jobs. The key, yeah, that's, this part is gonna, you're gonna see it as a text. And the key part, we need to uh, type the path we defined in app in here. So when you click any of many item, it's gonna trigger click handle menu click function. And it takes the key and redirects user based on that key. So we added. Yeah, you see there's jobs and we are in the jobs. Go to the dashboard again. Go to the jobs. Yeah, you see it's just redirect us. Yeah, we created the page basically. So let's go and see how we're gonna communicate with the backend. Yeah. So in React, class components first executes this constructor method and then component did mount method. After that, the render method. And uh, it executes it start executing, start running code from the like the lowest child to the parent. So if we gonna connect with backend on a child, and if we are uh, getting, we need some information from parent component to be able to to this backend connection, we need to wait parent component first to create or get that information and pass it to our child component. So that's why, I don't know, maybe there are some other ways, but I did like that. I am defining a state for this job posting component for the requests, like is initial request is a state. And in constructor method, I'm defining it as before request. So in component method, I'm looking this props cookie. You remember we passed cookie as a prop for
from app component so we can use it like this props this dot props dot cookie at the moment for the other things we pass we need to write this dot props first after that uh, we can write the name that we defined on the parent component so i'm looking if we have jpx access token if it's already taken before checking it if there is no jpx access token we cannot continue we cannot uh, do the backend connection successfully that's why we need jpx uh, access token already saved in the cookies it's kind of may seem complicated now because we are getting this JPEX access token while we are signing in or signing up. There are another components are doing it. I don't know if I need to explain the whole thing because everything kind of interconnected with me. So we are gonna, we need to check uh, if we have access token and also we generally need to check if this token has already expired or not then we can after that if everything is well we can uh, continue to do our request to backend so at hey, first, uh, I have a question here yeah so does this um, conditions actually exist in all the components like this condition like this stuff uh, stuff cookie dot get can you ask again yeah i mean like this condition right so this condition um the condition that you put here like this dot pop dot cookie dot get yeah tax access top uh, in the spot token does it exist in almost uh, all the components this is yeah this is our requirements i mean this thing looking at the cookie so when you when a user sign in if the sign in uh, successful we are saving some information that we get from this uh, sign in request on cookie this information includes jpex access token expiration time of the jpex access token user type if he or she uh, logged in with google there will be some more uh, cookies about the google access token issues so we are using JPEX access token to uh, so for every user and every session they can create an access token for that specific user and session and we need to say backend this request is coming from this specific user to do that, we are using this JPEX access token. Otherwise, they can't, don't, doesn't know, cannot know which user is requesting that information. And informations are, uh, almost all of the informations are unique for the separate or specialized for the different users. Uh, excuse me. I, yeah. Is this the same uh, authentication we use for the back end too? Does it have to be the same token for that user? I mean, if that if it's the same user, is it the same thing we use for both the back end and the front end? It has to be, right? So on back end side, when Seifo is uh, explaining you, you yeah. saw the JPEX client ID and client service. We are using yeah. this uh, to at first login and sign up requests. If this request is successful, they can return us a JPEX access token for that user and for that session. Oh, okay. And after that, we are using that JPEX access token to make every connection with backend for that user. Oh, okay, okay. So let me show you our um, API. Thing. So we are using Axios library for requests. 
You're using what? Axios. It's a library. Oh. Okay. Yeah. And the function we are using, I we defined a, a, another function which checks something at access token in the header and etc. This its name is Axios Capture. And in every uh, page we, that we need to do backend connection, we're gonna use that. Oh, okay. We imported it. Axios Capture. So it takes three um, like parameters inside. One is URL, the other one is config, and the third one is action. The action thing is for recapture v3. And yeah. So the recapture v3, we need to uh, define an action for every time that we are requesting that recapture verification request. And backend also need to have that uh, parameters and backend uh, like compares if the action we sent from front end is same as its own action for that request. So if we need to do uh, verify the capture verification for that request, we need to add action. If we don't add action, it doesn't trigger verifying recapture request. So you can just use URL and config. These are must parameters. And action is not that important. Yeah, in here, you see if we are doing a request for our, uh, like our APIs, it adds our JAPEX access token inside headers. Okay. Okay. I, mean, I need to check it like if it's to our own API, if the request is for our own uh, API because we are using other APIs for like getting company uh, logos if there if we had no company logo from backend side. That's why I'm checking it and adding the uh, JAPEX access token inside this uh, request function. Yeah. Before calling this uh, request function, we need to put, we need to define what is the method for this request gonna be. You can do it like the method is uh, need to be defined under config. So you can do it like that. It's gonna be a post request for verifying recapture. For getting data, actually uh, getting company's data is gonna be a get request. I'm defining the URL here. I have a, a URL builder because we have some filter options and we are uh, defining our URL. We are using URL parameters for these filters. That's why we have the URL builder here. So for the uh, request URLs, we have constants file and inside constants file we have endpoints. So every time if there's a new backend endpoint, we're gonna add it here. And then you need to export it like that. And whenever you're gonna use it, you need to import it like this. 
and after that you can use it for the URL part of the XJS recapture method. So this thing, yeah, before this thing you see, before requesting a get request for the companies, I'm calling this prop handle token expiration. So every time when user does an uh, executes a new request, I need to check if my token for that user, which is JAPEX access token, is expired or not. If it's expired, I need to do some actions to refresh it. If it's not expired, I can just go through. So I'm doing it on app. Actually, we have a handle token expiration function here. And I'm basically passing it every child components which need to use it. And before doing this request, I'm calling this function. And then this, so yeah. If the token is not expired, there is no problem. If the token is expired and user clicked uh, remember me, this is doing a ref refresh token request and uh, like saving the new access token in the cookie so the access capture can use it. Otherwise, if user, uh, yeah, if the token is expired and user is not clicked, remember me, it just removes all the cookies and uh, executing the handle sign out function. So that's why after evading it, we can, we are, uh, yeah, we are executing the main request function here. And then we have response. I'm saving these responses to state of this job posting function to be able to use it for other components. So changing state is a like special thing in React. You are doing it calling this predefined this dot set state function and inside it You, are, you need to like have this curly bracelet and the name of the state and then the, the variable or the data you wanna change it to. So after doing it, we have this companies list. I mean, we have this response that data, whatever backend returns us as this dot state dot companies for the job posting component. And now we can use them. So let's see what I what I'm doing. Generate feature check cards. Yeah, generate company cards. In generating company cards, I'm like mapping this this state comp uh, dot companies dot data. But probably it's gonna be better to see what is this this dot state dot companies at the moment. To do it just
yeah the this state that this that state that companies is this object at the moment and we have pagination information inside it and data so we want to use the data list and for every object in this list we're gonna uh, make a job card job posting card so that's why we need to map this list for each company I'm defining company parameters as a parameter for any uh, component any yeah any every element of that list for each company I'm basically saying return add div which is key is company dot id and in every div it's going to return a company card component and in company cards we're going to have company as a prop and handle token expiration as a prop so this prop of the company cards gonna be one of these objects and we're gonna use its own variables for each company cards so that means UI. It, it loops through all the companies and it renders that is how it work yeah basically this map function gonna return how many like there's 10 uh, objects in this list yeah and it's gonna return 10 of these divs okay okay so this company cards is a sub component for the job posting page at the moment okay and we need to yeah create these components and we can change something inside these components so this component yeah is uh, making backend connection inside that's why it also need to import this function urls etc and yeah since we are passing all this information actually there is no need to uh, do a backend connection to make this visual we are doing this backend connection when we are clicking this c reviews part Yeah, that's gonna change something. There will be a yeah, icon, company name, maybe position, and some other information. So what's that 90 seconds? 90 seconds is the company's company, name. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, we have this information in here. Yeah. So let's see. Yeah, you can do this, like this is a uh, way of defining a constant to const inside curly bracelets. We have the company as a prop and you can do that const curly bracelet company inside it equals this dot props. So in that way, you don't need to type this dot props dot company every time can just use this company constant oh, okay so you see we have uh, this company's information as a company prop we can reach that information by calling this dot props dot company dot whichever we need to use like company domain company name we have some ratings for that company etc as for changing this 
starts creating the job position. We don't have a job position inside this data. Just let's do that. Yeah. Okay. And the other thing we are using Ant Designs library mainly for the styles of the components. Whenever you gonna add a new thing, you can just go and check Ant Design if there is something you like. Yeah, like they have a lot of things. This is for a drop down. And you can just click here and use these codes inside your own code. Then how about the the, the corresponding style sheet? for that component if you want to pick any anything from this you can customize it so let's do something let's add a badge okay for example for something like you see you need to import badge and icon from end design and it's gonna be used so badge will be the parent uh, like the of what you gonna use it like let's do it for company logo It's automatically imported, yeah. Oh. And it takes count. Like what we have and we Okay. That ninety. Let's check if we had that. To make it different for everything. Yeah. So we are waiting a page around there. Okay, cool. So in order to make some customization, like changing colors, maybe shape, border radius, oh. overing something, first just gonna check if there's any customization allowed inside like a property. Okay. Like you can do, yeah, you can uh, select color as entering a color property. Okay, then I see uh i think i see something like beta on uh, on the header of job acts website is it is it from the same and design no oh, okay yeah i mean you 
and you don't need to use and design for everything you can okay. uh, like just code code it by yourself okay but generally for ui library we are using and design okay if you don't like anything in site this like for badge example if you want to do it like something totally different you can always do it yourself okay again by the way chris was telling to take out the beta yeah yeah just in case we actually yeah i already did that because yeah. okay for the new design we don't have it okay. i just didn't and just quicker than regarding the authentication so do we need it in every com component inside to have the cookie and stuff that earlier young Lim was asking for oh, this checking if there is yeah jpx access token cookie can't we just get once and then no we are getting once okay you i mean we are uh, getting it from backend just one time and saving it into browser's cookie and then we are reaching it whenever we need to use it but we need to check if we have that cookie in every component before uh, making a request to backend that requires that cookie so for example generally almost uh, more than 95 percent of our backend connections requires access token okay. to learn which user is requested it and we need to uh, add that access token inside headers mm -hmm. of our request and we need to check it if we have that access token okay okay uh younglin are you clear mm. yeah i'm i'm clear like the why we adding that i'm just i'm just trying to say that it's just the code the condition seems very repetitive on all the components there seems to be a better way to handle this that you can add a middleware inside the http request that it will be global for all as also as you mentioned that 99 percent of the uh, request it's um it's we really need to use the uh access token so i was wondering that if we can to if i mean in this application yeah yeah probably yeah. better to do it in a way I, i'm sure that there, there are some better ways to do it i'm just uh like i i'm starting to learn react with this project and i have only uh, developing in react for like eight or nine months and all of these structure, these codes are my best as long as I can do. I'm trying to develop uh, other parts. I'm doing refactoring when I find a better way. So while you are looking at the code, you may find some functionality could be done much in much better way you can always recommend it tell it to me and i can learn that way too yeah yeah don't worry i just saw that and just want to say that it could be just a yeah. suggestion yeah yeah the thing about the uh, checking the cookie thing is so you say we can do it in this general function right yeah it's uh, yeah it's probably similar like this um i'm not sure yeah. if you have like something like uh like the ASOS thing, that, uh, like the handle thing. all the AP http requests and then you can do it over there yeah we are doing it in page yeah API, uh, component actually but the thing to check check it it's for like uh, showing spinner, not rendering this uh, main component for the job posting 
right away. Before that, we need to have this, the, the, uh, like the properties that is coming from the app. Before we really have that properties, we shouldn't render the main return method, the main uh, yeah, component. And we need to return a spinner or something to wait this property is going to pass from app to our child component. So we are getting this like uh, access token inside app, actually inside the uh, user authentication methods. And app going to uh, pass it to its own child components. But when we run this whole code, the child components are, execute, are, yeah, are executed before parent components. That's why if a child component have, needs some property from parent component, it needs to wait parent component to be executed to have that property. I don't know if this way is the best way, probably sure it's not the best way, but I don't know any other way for now. If we can find better, we can always reflect to it. Uh, like Sago, I guess, uh, uh, we'll be having front end from the scratch. Yeah. So, young uh, I was older than that. He pushed some preliminary stuff, I saw. Yeah. It will be independent. It's not like back end, it will run independent, but it's just more that how is that currently they use some stuff, you know, this as a reference. Okay. And always talk to you again just to make sure. Yeah, that's. Yes, Saku. Yep. Yeah, so actually, last night I was doing the use case um, analysis. So I'm trying to come up uh, for the milestone to you that it's mainly for the job keeper, uh, job seeker. So the milestone one and milestone three is for the employers. So I kind of feel like that probably will be, we will still have to make some changes in this repo. Uh, we, because that's um, because for the for the uh, the new repo, that we probably can do an employer portal that would be similar like this, but it's mm -hmm. mainly for the employer to use. But the uh, milestone two use case is that it's mainly for the job seekers, which actually is this portal that uh, you guys have, and it's for to checking the uh, jo uh, job application post, uh, process and also to look for the jobs. So I feel like the probably would be a better place to put it in this repo. Um, yeah, I, 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 that's what you mean. So you mean for end-to-end, -end, like for students to be able to apply and advance? Yeah, so also I think uh, Edgman probably have the same idea. Like he also, like he showed you guys before, like to add the jobs in the job done. That would be the place that you actually apply for the job. but. That would that, that the new repo that I was thinking that we can create a portal that's similar like this, but it's mainly used by the employer that to post the job and also check the progress for the uh, um, mm -hmm. applicants. But for in, for the job seekers to to apply for a job, it probably should happen in this portal. I feel like yeah, that, that's definitely there will be like in the menu where you'll go. I think job search or something job posting you will click and you will see a list of applied jo jobs you will pull. So yeah, that's that will be here. Yeah, so that means that we probably need to ask, we need to access this repo, this front end repo as well. So um, if someone can create a capstone branch, that would be helpful. Yeah, uh, I think 
uh, I, I, I will add that to be fine, you guys. <coughs> and uh, yeah, new branch also, Capstone, we can create there for this part. And PR and review with AG, once all good. Because that's our main pr production one. Once we do from the capstone master to master, we need to make sure it all works. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so like, uh, like I just mentioned in Slack, when can I expect the basic stuff in in capstone repo so that I can, you know, start creating? There, young Wing? Is yeah, it? I I have it over there, and then, and I also I even create pull request. I tag you as a reviewer. But last night that I was like thinking, I'm not sure like which UI framework that I should be using. I will set up the Bootstrap, but I'm not. But I'm looking at the website. It doesn't look like Bootstrap that you guys are using. So I was not sure. So that's why I I closed that pull request. Um. So today that uh, Edgeman said that you guys use and design. So I probably want to keep it consistent. So I still needs to make some changes. Okay. to use the end design uh, framework. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. For the uh, libraries, actually, we, for the graphics, if you are going to include some graphs, we are using e-charts. OK. Yeah. Like, yeah, oh. React e-charts. Oh, OK. And. Yeah, if you have, if you're gonna use an HTML parser, I don't think that you may for the job posting entries. We are using this draft to HTML, HTML to draft, and this editor. Uh, what is this useful? Sorry. So I'm, oh, that's for the blog. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is for the blog. Okay. Yeah. It's like For this editor, if you need this kind of thing, oh, okay. editor okay. library we are currently using, you can find it on blog editable or events editable okay. page. Yeah, I think it's pretty much it. For the Google, yeah, I think you are you gonna. Uh, need some new login, sign in, sign up flow. We have this flow in sign in page for like Google, uh, Google sign in things. You can look at here. If you're gonna need to use any Google sign-in issues, yeah, it's pretty much that. And another thing, I'm. It may be beneficial for you if you wanna change the uh, end designs UI, but they don't allow you to do it as entering a uh, property. You can always do it like finding which, let's say I, I wanna change the border radius of it. Let's find which class is defining its border radius first. So background yeah, border radius is this one. Let's check if I change it here. 
it's going to change. Yeah. So after you find it, you can copy the name of the class name. All right. Eh? And then paste it at which uh, component style you want to change. If you want to change it for all of our uh, UI, you just can add it on app, app style of app. Or if you want to change it just for company cards, you can add it inside company cards. Like Maybe. Do you have any questions? I think it's enough for the basic in introduction. Yeah. And you may uh, like have a lot of different questions. You can always ask me. Sure. Thanks so much again. I really appreciate your time. Uh, uh, also recorded, so in case you guys later need back end and front end separate. But Gonglin and VS, I'm looking at you guys. Your setup for the making us beautiful UI kind of. If you guys have any question, just please be more proactive. Just, yeah. Sure. And just on time, reach the guys that jump all of us and try to figure out. Sure. So. Thank you, Gimei. You're welcome. Thank you for all. Yeah, thank you. I'm going to stop recording now. And... Uh...